äh, weiter geht es jetzt bei uns, äh, ja, erstmal geht es weiter auf Englisch. Yeah, uh, the next talk will be in English. And uh, it's about uh, building the CCC camp of 2019, but uh, in a game engine. So uh, it's going to be a, a 3D world where people can uh, yeah, interact, but not in, in 2D like in the work adventure, but uh, in 3D. It's a, a, a project by uh, Richard McFly, and they're going to show us uh, basically in-game or in, in the engine, how this is working. And the main thing this, uh, well, I mean, this is a chaos experience. So uh, it's, it's, a, it's a call to join. It's a call to all the communities to build their own assemblies like uh, they did on the camp. So we do have uh, like a, a playable level in the end with all the different uh, all the different uh, villages. Uh, it's a Unity project, so that's a, an uh, open source program everybody can can use. And uh, you can use, uh, for example, Blender to uh, build your models. So that's that's free as well. And it's definitely worth learning because it's uh, one of the stronger 3D programs by now. And uh, so, yeah, I'm switching over to uh, Mitchell McFly. Uh, Welcome. Okay, I uh, think we're on. Um Hello. Um, I think we are now over the stream has a bit of delay, so I got this uh, nice introduction from MePunk a bit delayed. Um, hi, um, I'm Jesse McFly. Uh, you might know me from many ways from one or another camp or conference or uh, something else in this relationship. And uh, yeah, um, I have seen uh, Rich uh, seeing, uh, seen building the game and uh, we came up the idea to make the mod and uh, hi Rich. Do you want to introduce yourself? You've traveled with Milliways in the past. You have. Okay, so, but yeah. No, my slide's not changing at all. I think the lever off has crashed. Awesome. There we go. Off grid. Um, you already gave an idea uh, of uh, what off grid is. Um, how did you get the inspiration to that in real quick?
We made it. We needed to uh, make a quick stop because I can't hear you yet. Um, yes, and now I hear you double. Okay, can you try again if we can now hear you? Yes, let's uh, try that again from there. Can you now hear something? Yeah, I guess it's a bit uh, chaotic uh, at the moment. Can you speak? Then I see the pig. Huh? Yeah, I, I, I can. can. <laughs> I want to. I want to sort of say stuff, but not relevant stuff that I'm then going to forget to repeat. So I'm trying to come up with things off the cuff. Uh, um, you seem to be on there now. Okay, let's uh, then okay. Uh, get back to this. Um, cool. Thank you, Ethan. So, for uh, Thank you, feedback. My my name's Rich Metz, and if you missed this the the intro bit, or I was silent during the intro bit, my name's Rich Metz, and I'm one of um, a small team of three and a half developers um, making Off Grid. Um, we uh, yeah, we're just a little independent team, uh, and Off Grid is our first independent original game, uh, having contracted for various other people over the last few years. Um, so yeah, uh, Off Grid's a game about activism, uh, information and disinformation, uh, and data in its prolificity. Uh, so yeah, um, and McFly, your your slides are down at the moment. Do you know that? Yeah, I'm. Um... There we go. You know what, we have to do this right now, this way. Uh, the full screen mode seemed to not work nicely together with the, uh, with the, with the but we only have some few slides anyway. Okay. Mostly of that will be demonstration and that works. So to praise why with the long story, because I'm not very good at TLDR when people ask me things like, what's your inspiration? But um, off Grid was kind of born around about 2011, beginning of 2011, before a lot of um, the Occupy stuff had kicked off. But just as a load of the Arab Spring activism uh, was starting within uh, Anonymous and various people around it. Um, and so I'd actually seen uh, a talk at INET conference, which is a, a kind of dull internet protocol forum, really, uh, that had a lot of kind of very deep technical talk, uh, but there was also a guy called Evan Moglen talking about how we'd lost the war for the internet and how, although it started as an open source project and we built Python, we built Perl, um, various stakeholders were taking it over and taking it from us. Uh, and he kind of did a rallying cry uh, to to people to get involved in open source projects and try and uh, try and fight the ever commercialization of the internet. Uh, he, he kind of, a couple of years later, then said it was all over and <laughs> there wasn't much point in trying anymore. But hopefully his message has continued to evolve. Um, and that moment really kind of set me in, in gear for trying to make a game about um, the loss of the internet to private interests and the idea of trying to make uh, a game about regaining control of the internet. It's, it's set in a near future dystopia kind of like a, a a tomorrow if different kind of setting um whereby a lot of activists are being preemptively arrested um and that's where the story sort of starts with you playing a kind of every man uh a bit of a noob really someone who doesn't really well not even a noob a complete technophobe uh who whose daughter is a, a potential hacker or activist and uh, she starts to get herself in trouble and you have to learn about the internet and its dark underbelly uh, in order to work out what's going on. Let's uh, really look into that real quick because we have something prepared there. Let's see if it works. Yep. Fingers crossed. There we go. That looks like that's working. Powers, 
So there's no sound on that, um, but if you keep it playing, I can explain what's going on if we need. Hey, Dad. Essentially, this is your daughter. You're cooking breakfast for her first thing in the morning. I actually, E Punk could probably tell you whether the uh, the sound is working for the rest of the people Come watching. On. I'm hungry. Um, yep. As you can see, Coming it's right um, it's a normal day. Jen's at her uh, cubes box. <laughs> Uh, messing about, you're dropping her breakfast, and uh, she says, happy birthday, Dad. I got you something. I got you something. Um, and you're happy like, birthday. oh, great, that's that's lovely. Um, you open it up, and she's like, yeah, wow. they're not the fancy ones, I'm but the OS is over. No, they're not the fancy ones. Oh, okay, the well, I'm probably just course. ruining it by talking over the top of it then. <laughs> if the sound works, I'll shut up. Yeah. And look, I set up all your favorite apps, so if you turn on Bluetooth, they'll come right up. Bluetooth? Huh. Yes, I see. Mm. Uh, mm. Yeah. Just push right here. Oh, okay, I see. Jeez. You mean the world to me, darling. Freeze! Jen Harmon, you are under arrest. Please do not resist. So it's yeah, been a mistake. Uh, your daughter getting arrested. Don't what are you yep. doing? That's um, the agent Jen, pushing your breakfast I'll off the table. Stay back, for no sir. reason. This uh, is a national security letter. Under the Official Secrets Act, it is hereby a crime to talk or communicate about this incident. Your daughter will be in processing for 90 days. We'll call you. <laughs> okay. And that's that, really. That's so, the setup for the game. That's the setup. Good. So let's uh, talk about a bit about the technical parts uh, also, because uh, the idea is to integrate the original plan was to integrate milliways in there but uh, mm -hmm. now it comes to the game so the game the game's built on unity mm -hmm. uh yep. i write here unity can be free asterisks uh yeah. that means the version that you need for uh editing the uh level and the map files and uh so are free uh, yeah i have to register yeah unity is is Unfortunately, it's free as in gratis, but not as in Libre. Um, but it's a commercial engine, and for us, the choice was trying to make a game, although this has been a long project, that kind of uh, was as commercially sound as possible because we want it to kind of be marketed and put out there as a, as a game that anyone else would consume kind of unknowingly, um, knowing that it has those deeper layers of activism and, uh, and threads around around the real things in the world. Good. Okay. But the real talk is actually about the game mode. So yeah. I told you already the uh, plan was to put uh, the milliways into the mod in some corner in there. And uh, then the CCC camp happened. Uh, I guess that was actually after the camp and we decided to uh, and started on the camp building the Milliways CCC camp, which uh, yeah. results in Milliways has nice pictures, Milliways has a half up to date overview, um, and all of the other things. But very quickly that escalated and uh, turned into a mod being more the whole CCC camp. Yeah. So uh, this is uh, how it looks as a screenshot. Some of you might remember this. Um, and I hope that I'm already creating some memories for some people at this point. Um, yeah. So the goal of for us of the mod is that we want to have a virtual CCC camp in Unity where we can walk around. Um, it really works very well of uh, creating those feelings again of this this point of like oh nice memories, right? Um, in this game, you will have electronic devices that you can interact with. Some of them have been on the camp, 
Um, some of them are new. And uh, we actually at some point thought, well, let's get all of the villages in there, or at least the villages that want to be in there. Um, so we needed to have a plan how to get everybody in there. Yeah, I mean, the, I think what happened was you started to make the Millerways mod and we were putting it onto the, well, we live streamed the, the initial build of it and various people at camp, um, like um, the Scottish Embassy and uh, Garaffle kind of saw what you were up to and wanted to get involved. And then in the kind of live streams we did post camp, um, we just started kind of adding adding people's villages in and, and collecting people collaborating on stuff. It was kind of quite, quite organic like that really, wasn't it? Yeah. The Garaffle specifically is a, a village that kind of helped us making some pressure there and uh, getting things going. So thank you, Garaffle. So yeah, um, as you see, we uh, want your villages in there when you want. Um, and we need something for that. And that point is that the camp is in general uh, rather badly documented on how, um, uh, on where which tent was and uh, information that you need to recreate a believable image. And some of this is just in your images because there's a lot of villages that plainly didn't take any pictures at all because their photo policies just allowed it. So yep. we basically would like to some way tap your memories if we can find a way how to do that and for that we have actually come up with two uh, possibilities um, the first one is the path that the Grafo village took it's slower uh, it requires us to sit on Jitsi and it basically means I will export my desktop to you via the Jitsi and you tell me no that tent needs to go a bit more over there and that thing needs to go over there that works well with non-complicated villages where all the models that you want to use in a 3D world, I'm showing you what I mean in a moment, already exist somewhere for us. So if you're using normal tents, normal SG40 tents, normal rented tents, have the common pavilions, have the common desk, beer taken and all the other stuff, all of that is easy because we don't really need to build models. We need, just need to put the existing models at the right place. Um, it basically requires us, but it abstracts you from all of the part of having to do uh, all of this documentation by yourself. Like handing to you with the gates, the license, um, the keys and all of this. The possibility B is a second <laughs> possibility. It's uh, you build your own village. Um, that is on the long term faster because the scales better, but it's also more complicated. Um, it does not require us to basically sit there with you the whole time and did something. It allows you to do it yourself. Um, and that is the best way specifically if you have uh, a more complicated village, want to make this more group thingy, like you want to do this together, um, or you're using models that don't exist yet. So that first have to be built in Blender or Cinema 4D, like Epunk, who uh, introduced us very nicely in the beginning. Uh, did the sea base part and he built all of the uh, buildings in Cinema 4D. Um, and yeah, that is uh, the, that best way. If you check out the Git yourself, uh, you get a development key uh, from us. Um, you can just ask me. I think that's less complicated if we send everybody directly to Rich. So I will have development keys for people to hand out and uh, uh, if they contribute uh, significantly to this uh, mod and at their own villages. Great. Yeah, and uh, I think that's the part now where I think we should just have a look how it looks. Um, so that is uh, the Unity that now needs a second to reconnect when the circle is over. Um, one, I, one of the things that I think always nice for you to show is the starting point if you can which is um that uh satellite image that we got um from uh i can't remember who it was yeah that's uh, a bit difficult to uh, get in now because i didn't prepare that <clears throat> oh no it's, it's in there already 
Ah, oh, right. I just need to put in the layer, right? Yeah, you just need to allow the layer to show. Unity does take a bit of time to allow me to do something. Now we're talking. Yep. So, where was this layer again? It's in the Zuglai Park uh, layer, I think. And there's a something called map, an image or a layer yeah, called map. Uh, let's zoom out to something that most of the people do remember. Hmm. Um, map. There you go. Um, this is the map and the overlay. Um, it's a bit hard to see, but you can see it. It's uh, something that we made to help us to uh, put all the objects at somewhat the right place. Um, it at least contains the uh, um, old images for the right buildings at the right place and all of that. So, yeah. In this world, I'm taking the map away in a second because that's an overlay. Um, that is uh, um, like two meters over the ground. And as you heard, uh, one of the villages that has been built in the beginning was the Milliways. So you have this uh, walk around possibilities here at the moment. And this is basically the different objects that we have here. Some of them can be controlled. Um, this thing, for example, is a beer tab together. Like this is actually something we might want to explain. I don't know if any of the people sitting in this talk now have been at Milliways, but this is the uh, <coughs> beer tab at Milliways. And we have put next to it the beer tab from the Shah 2017, which was from the Amsterdam people. Um, this is in a server rack, and this is nicely interactable with. So um, you can define a point uh, and then point of interest is what's called, right? Yep. And then you can connect some scripting um, and other stuff to that. So this is supposed to be an IoT tab, which kind of it tries to give the impression. And so you can play around with that. There's further things standing around there. We have a computer here with some other interest points and we had several devices that really were in the camp. But yeah, for the memories, for the people, this is the milliways. Um, but there's more, and you've possibly seen that. And it's possibly easier. Actually, let's do this. That's just a uh, builder level that takes a moment. So it's, uh, as you see, most of the fields are still green, um, purely based on the point that uh, um, most of the villages aren't there yet. Waiting for Unity to react. Yeah, that's uh, the process of building a level. Um, I press the button and then you can't do really anything anymore anyway for 30 seconds. Pray to the demo gods. Pray to the demo gods. There you go, it's building. Yeah. The world is empty. The world is full again. So what McFly is doing here is he's he's got a copy of the game that he's uh, linking the Unity mod build directly to. So and now it's dropped his player into his mod. So that is what we have so far. Um, this is private property, mate. This We've got McFly a... walking around. That are still an agent over there is uh, a lorry, and you can program yourself and the people to be able to interact with. Uh, you already see the 
possible view of the two devices over there. Um, if you uh, if you go to Lowry's um, techno trolley, uh, which Lowry's famous for pretty much being inseparable from, it's a massive speaker on a on a. Um, oh, yeah, what's the American uh, one? There was uh, here stroller. It's not here anymore. No, it's over by Lowry so that you can see it uh, more easily. I think I can even um, switch on music. It uh, looks like Jake's working as well. Jake is walking around now. So there you go. You switch on Lowry's speaker pram and he starts doing a little salsa dance. There we go. <laughs> Lowry's doing it in real life in the background too. Yeah. And, uh... and Barrett, I can't get him to walk around at the moment. I think I worked out why. It's because I didn't put coffee in the game. <laughs> <laughs> you have to, you have to give all of the characters motivation, and Barrett's is set to coffee, and I miss uh, miss uh, aligned how to uh, how to set up that particular interest point. So, the moment Barrett is standing watching people use the beer tap, which it's it's, it's unfortunate really, um, but he's there. Yep. Um. I think and it looks also enabled, so they should be able to yep. actually say something. So yeah, this is uh, the Miniwest place at the moment. Um, and uh, we got some people in there that like, uh, this is Barrett? This is yeah, Barrett. that's Barrett. Yep, his hair's the wrong color at the moment, slightly light. And he's, uh, yeah, he's, he stood still waiting for coffee. Yeah. <laughs> Same with Biela. Biela is also fun. in the game, so she's also placed in the camp. And um, uh, we have uh, Lori, but yeah. before right. we go any deeper, I think let's have uh, yeah. Jake is now working. Uh, there is a Lori here. And uh, let's have a quick walk because most of the other villagers want to add themselves to the village. Let's uh, have a walk uh, quickly on the campsite. Um, I think. Barrett and uh, Laurie might be the only people that are now on the camp that haven't been on the camp before. So, first of all, here's the Belgian hacker camp, hacker village with the bus. Um, and uh, everything else here is still very green because we'd like to fill that. Um, over here is the core tents from the sea base. So, thank you, uh, Epunk, for building all of those. Um, and you see the Seabase has, as we know, the Seabase always very specific models. Um, so, um, yeah, there is the antenna from the Seabase and this whole entrance was their own portal. And we'd like to get all of the other villages basically in there in the same way. So I don't know which village I'm running to at the moment, but we can clearly add it. Um, let's qu quickly sprint over to the Graffel village, because that is also there, and the Graffel should be mentioned there, because they are the ones that actually pushed us over. There is the speaker talks. Uh, this is not the, uh, the nicest tents yet. Um, the one at Billyways even has uh, an inside yet that can be used properly. And... Um, that uh, will be changed for the others too. So yeah, here's so the Graffel village. Yeah. yeah, they have a hidden tap, I heard. But uh, I came over to the Graffel at some points and had this gigantic table of whiskey bottles over there. So we try to recreate that memory. Because I don't know, but when I... Uh, uh, hear them the gravel then i'm usually thinking of uh, some nice pt whiskey this is the cert that also exists already it's still empty and the doors are at the wrong place at the time but this is uh the easy fix and as you'd see uh the overall landscape uh the general landscape is there um but what's mostly making to make this a living place is the villages oh. larry's got a parakeet <laughs> We're gonna have to add that to the game now. 
This is Friedel, Techno MC Pirate. But, uh, yeah, let's uh, go quickly <laughs> over to uh, back to the Milliways village um, because on the journey you will actually see all of those nice places. You can walk up to the hill. Uh, I hope I will be able to put colliders in that you can walk up on the tower over there. Um, yep. But I'm not promising anything there yet. My personal goals, one of the next things to do would be uh, the bar here. But um, that would require building some individual models. So yeah, it's, uh, the idea is to get the other villagers to uh, jump all in here and uh, help us fill the voids and therefore create uh, a gigantic level. What does this also mean? If people are really good with Unity, the level will be open source and can be reused. Yep. Um, yeah, all the props and all of the models are all um, there for, for people to use in a share-like fashion. Um, PLS that you heard of a coin. Yeah, and so, uh, let, me, let me log in here, right? Yeah, you can hack it. So you've got data view, which kind of shows up the data that is being used by different characters around the world. And you can SSH into various devices at different times as well. Um, if you have sufficient access to the network or the device's credentials. Um, so here we've got the beer server, uh, which McFly is SSHing into. Um, and it's got the users of that beer server. So McFly's been drinking uh, beer, and it's been logging uh, his favorite uses of um, GermanBeerIsBest.com and Millerways.info. Lowry's been visiting Army Surplus Mining Gear. Um, and uh, I think Barrett's been on Giant Bomb and Linux Gaming on Reddit. Uh, I think we've got a couple of his articles in that in that link list there as well. So the idea is like you can start to populate this world and it's pretty thin at the moment because we've only really been doing all of the kind of physical surroundings. But you can populate it with interesting devices that have different interactions on them uh, of varying interest. I mean, like one of the things that I was hoping to get done this afternoon that I didn't quite get to was putting some files um, on some servers like... Uh, um, for instance, Barrett's got his memoirs coming up uh, fairly soon, and I'm sure uh, that there, there'd be maybe a chapter or two of that that could go on. That's some good reading. Um, and uh, at one point, Lowry, uh, Lowry wrote um, a pretty good uh, representation for his um, court appeal case that uh, started with a rickroll, which I think needs to be kind of um, somehow immortalized in gaming history. Um, I think it was, I think the opening line was, now is the winter of our disc contents. <laughs> so the, the idea is you can kind of find interesting files throughout uh, hacker history, zines, um, different kind of court depositions, different um, pieces of information that, you know, people might find interesting to dig around in. And they can unlock different devices or different conversations with different characters. So if you a village, can kind of make this into a living world. So if a village has a, a, a certain um, village-originating uh, documents that uh, can then be have, be in the village or an FTP server in small, I guess, yep. because otherwise everything explodes. Yeah, you know, copies of POC or GTFO, stuff like that. I'd say. I mean, and this is probably a good point to bring in Lowry and, and Barrett, right? To, to sort of talk about their interest in how that might overlap. Do you think? Are you guys there? Have you got audio? I think, I think that was a cue, Barrett. <laughs> it sounds like it. <laughs> I can hear them. Can you hello? hear them? No. Yep. Hello? One, two, one, two. I can hear them. Though, yep. to get I can I hear you. you. You just relay everything we say. <laughs> <laughs> Not very good at sign language. language. Liberation Army. <laughs> I can think I can hear you both. Can... Good, good. Cool. cool. Yeah. yeah. Well, so, well, so, I mean, um, Larry, Larry and Barrett obviously didn't, didn't make it to camp, camp and, that's and that's kind of one of the reasons, reasons that we've got, got their characters, characters in here, in here right? right? To, um, to, make to make sure, sure that, that 
hackers, <laughs> activists, activists and folks, folks who, who couldn't, couldn't be with us at some, some of these events, events um, can, can also, also kind of, of um, be there in spirit in the game, game after the fact. Uh, and, and talking, talking about it. If next time somebody does want to actually kidnap me and take me to camp, that would also be great. As long as it's against my will, it's fine. Yep. <laughs> there is a bad echo on us now. Okay. Okay. Um, Okay, I can hear his plate, but I can't hear any one of them actually talking. But I guess when you can hear them, the others can hear them. Get my headphones. Oh, uh, should we use? You know, should we use? Uh, Have you guys got a set of earbuds that you could share left and right on, or something? Possible one. I've only got a. Yeah, but what's this message coming out? My right ear works. The piggle uh, says, yeah. like OBS says, uh, they can be heard. <laughs> Without an echo, it's okay. With it's not got an echo. Oh, uh, you see those pigs from them. That Are you saying this expensive video conferencing software has less echo cancellation than Jitsi? Is that <laughs> potentially? <laughs> well, by expensive, we, we are talking about OBS, so it's still an open source project. Oh, I don't know. I thought it was still, something something still vaguely subject to the same caveats. Yeah. Um. This might work the microphone better. Oh, yeah. Better. Okay. Well, I can hear you guys fine. Um, right. So, uh, so yeah. Um, I mean, the I think the idea would be in the long run that everyone and anyone can add any sort of documents and interactions of interest around camp, whether that's devices of, of real historic purpose or fictional ones about interesting things that may or may not happen. Um, Gibson, 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 Gibson. Yeah, exactly. We need some Gibsons. We need we need some fantastical devices. I mean, the, the other nice thing about um, the way that the devices are set up in Off Grid is you can create particle effects and flashing lights and smoke and fire. So, uh, so there's lots of fun to be had. For instance, we can make that beer tap when McFly is getting a beer actually spray beer all over him and change a value in his AI to say that he's covered in beer and he has to go and use the sauna to clean up or something. Because it wasn't that the game. Not at this one. There, there, was a, there was a portable sauna at Shah, wasn't there? Yeah, I think the finish mm -hmm. had something like that. Yeah. We were going to get one for the EMF camp, but it got cancelled. Yeah. When when oh. EMF is next year though, right now? In, EMF is it. currently planned next year. In, in in this the best of all possible worlds where the UK government manages a pandemic that starts telling me. Yeah. Yeah, I guess we weren't thinking it would go on for this long. <laughs> so um there's only a few minutes left, so I mean it'd be nice to kind of get um Lowry and Barrett's kind of view on the idea of a game where you can mod things like this in and, and why it piqued their interest. Either you guys up for elaborating along that yeah. line? There's a number of, uh, of uses I can see, especially now that I've seen a little bit more about how it works, uh, do something like this, you know. Uh, number one, obviously, uh, it's, a, it's another uh, method of distribution of materials uh, beyond the conventional ones of media and social media and so forth. Uh, more to the point, it can also be used in the same way, I suppose, that Dropbox is, in some cases, um, as a means of users who can mod, actually, perhaps, adding in, you know, information. Uh, you can then gamify the process of uh, crowdsourced research by having participants go through uh, large deposits of information that are already public, uh, in some cases, but not utilized. And I can think of a lot of examples of that. Uh, and actually, you know, to the extent that they could find, you know, uh, elements in these documents. For instance, the six million Stratford emails that have been in the public for about eight years. A great deal of stuff still in there. I've come across a few since I've actually, in the last couple of years, I've had a chance to go look through them. Uh, there's still a great deal of things that as events proceed, as new names come up, and as we learn the significance of certain topics and individuals, uh, there's a great deal to be found and processed. Uh, and so I've always been interested in the idea of making a game out of this kind of work because people enjoy games and uh, games have a different status uh, for better or worse uh, in terms of perception and in terms of law and in terms of uh, all kinds of things than does you know other traditional formats so that's the first thing that strikes me 
I'm also interested, as you know, from our, our talks, we, your Kickstarter uh, stream, you and I, and we talked about particular, particular generation, which I don't know how much you make, uh, make use of it here. Particular generation in general is there's a huge potential there uh, for uh, designing and implementing non-intuitive structures, like network structures for collaboration. Uh, I don't know. I, I know. I know that that's not an entirely crackpot idea because I've, I've talked to some people about it, including yourself, but also some, some engineers in the U.S. over the last couple of years, and, and they all seem to think there's something to it. That would have to be something that someone else would have to get the ball and run with, though, because that's as far as I can kind of think on the matter. Uh, and I'm sure Lowry has some interesting Finnish ideas. Well, some of the views on the, on that kind of thing that you could kind of uh, you can kind of build quite a lot of stuff in in off grid because of the fact that it has a Lua framework on top of it. So anything that you can write in Lua, you can you can write in off grid in 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 some sense. Um, I mean, uh, there will have to be a kind of download any given mod at your own discretion um, uh, caveat because. Fundamentally, most games have read-write access to your hard drive, and uh, if you're downloading a mod that is running Lua, it is obviously sandboxed, but there are sandbox escapes and things along those lines. So, um, but conceivably, that could become part of the game, so people could try and create a mod that allows you to safely run snippets of other people's code, like yep. a level of sandboxing, and then people could try and game that and exploit that, and so you could have a kind of meta level of hacking via the interactions of different ones. You also have a sub game in which you know put in you put in, you know, let's say ten thousand documents pulled from a certain data trove in the last ten years. Mm -hmm. And in the game like you have to figure out so what is the connection between say uh, Mueller and Flynn? What connects these two individuals? You'll find out in these emails. Those would be examples of something we already know, but we would use that as a means of getting around the problem with the press uh, not really being able to follow through on things very well, sometimes not wanting to. Um, there's all kinds of ways that just often, you know, that one can you know, think of the, the, the nubs of these ideas. There's all kinds of ideas, there's all kinds of potential here, I think. Uh, so, so, so it's stated otherwise. How would you like it, Rich, if your lovely video game was uh, yeah. sub subverted into a platform yeah, increasing clandestine insurgency? Video game, they'd be shaming against capitalism and the state. Would that would that be okay? Well, that's the thing with making video games. You have to be prepared for the community to take it in any direction they want. So if it's that, instead of drawing lots of penises everywhere, I think we'll plumb for that. I can't guarantee they're mutually exclusive. Uh, <laughs> no, that's true. That's true. Like, can I control my NPC and go into anyone's the game and drop it to, hey, you can put AI into the I need you to call so this order, this outlet, tell them. Anyway. You can yeah, I mean, you can run, you can play as any character. So although we, we've got the main hero character as the playable character here, your NPC, Barrett, or, or Lowry's, or any NPC anyone wants to make in this kind of low-poly style that we have uh, with the customizable characters, um, basically we can swap them in. So Barrett could be the one exploring something and then going to visit Lowry to get a conversation going about a trove of documents, stuff like that. Um, yeah. So yeah, the other thing open -ended. We about before, Rich, was the um, the potential to use this platform as a way of bridging time and space in a kind of ar archivist sense. So um, you could go to you know, the virtual EMF camp, the virtual CCC camp, and you could watch talks from historical uh, historical camps potentially through through the game yeah. through the kind of streaming mechanism. Um, and that allows people to, again, attend things virtually that they weren't able to at the time. And there's, there's a lot of people that would like to sort of dip their toes into hacker culture uh, who haven't been swept into it by the natural currents of their Yeah, the like, second life, that was, there was something like that that was done, you know, with events, you know, actual, that you could walk around and people were getting talks. And, of course, those were the first targets we had uh, back in the 4chan uh, <laughs> slash B slash days. So they did, they, they, you know, they, really they, nice. they got their ghost toes dipped right into hacker culture yeah. right, without even... I don't know what's going to happen. And I guess the other other main point is that video games are rapidly, if, if, not, if they haven't already, um, supplanting traditional, more broadcasty, less interactive forms of media is the way that culture is elaborating and reflecting upon society. So having uh, having a game like this allows there to be a slightly more realistic, slightly less staid and cliche portrayal of hackers. You know, hackers in kind of films, it's just like a modern day version of a wizard. It's just a sort of lazy means to achieve a plot. Was the wizard the Nintendo magic. one? Sorry? Was the wizard the Nintendo one? The wizard the what? The wizard? That was one of the Nintendo? One Nintendo. of the Nintendo. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, with, but, with Fred Savage. Fred Savage? Was there was a movie called The Wizard. Where Fred Savage was, was the Nintendo competition. Win the big oh, Nintendo fight. 
I don't know. Um, hey, Jonathan, on, hold on one second. Fred, Fred Fred to, to complete the point that I was making of, of ahead, some potential interest and elements that I've now forgotten. Well, you were essentially saying that the, usually the hackers are a plot bridging uh, sort uh, yeah, of character. So, so, yeah, so the, 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 there is sort of more, more things to it than, oh, here's this person that you have in the crew that makes things happen by tapping on a keyboard. You know, it's the, the actual relationship that hackers have as people that explore the frontier of the potentiality of technology interacting with society and in some ways bear a responsibility for the the way that progresses. As you were talking about earlier, the, the internet that we had that we lost, it's some people, not saying any of the people watching this, but some people got a little bit comfortable in the industry and allowed capitalism to swamp and take over and um, banalize the internet. Um, but we are we are always on that frontier to the extent that you're exploring new ways that technology can be taken apart, put together, and made to do interesting things. Then you are working on that frontier. You're kind of clearing the routes uh, into which the future is built, and it's it's good to actually give people a taste of that uh, in a partic participatory fashion. Actually yeah, what it's like to build something to, to, to them. I mean, I think. Off-grid's mechanics are all built around that notion of the pen is mightier than the sword and, and kind of information as the battleground and all of that kind of stuff. So the, the it, it isn't just surface here. Like anything that you want to make with data being a precursor to um, the interaction is going to be central to how the characters react and are manipulated. Um, so... It's also it's yeah. an educational thing as well. So a lot of people still don't realise that we live in a, a data economy that the, the most valuable global commodity that uh, the economy depends on the flow of is now data. It surpassed, surpassed oil and fossil fuels some time ago. And um, so for people to actually see through playing this game that what's, you know, what gives people power in a virtual, virtualised environment or a digitised environment is uh, having a rich interaction with the data levels that are constantly flowing. And we're just seeing how much of an ability it gives you might give people a better appreciation for what they're giving away daily by not uh, engaging in uh, informed consent negotiations with services that they sign up to except to strip mine off. That was, that was definitely an inspiration at the beginning of the game too, so that's a perfect place to round it off. I think McFly is ready to um, do the outro because I think the session is about to finish. I'd like to say thanks to uh, Larry and Barrett for coming on and kind of explaining a bit more from the hacker and activist perspective as to why it's interesting as well. So thanks, guys. Are on, by the way. So McFly, can you hear me? Are you, yes. you ready to do the outro? Yes. So uh, thank you all. Uh, thank you for giving us the chance to introduce this real quick here with a uh, nice Emily Ways uh, part. Um, there will be another talk tomorrow at 17.30, which now also is in the uh, schedule, uh, which is about sending postcards to hackers in jail, which is something that we usually do at Milliways and happened over there. And uh, yeah, thank you for your time. Uh, it would be very nice if you uh, reach out to me um, so we can add your uh, village into uh, this game and um, create an awesome living digital memory of the CCC camp 2019 in this happier pre-COVID times when we still could meet each other, which sounds a bit weird right now, but uh, yeah. okay, then uh, thank you. Thank you all, you two too. Uh, thank you, Rich, and uh, wish you all a uh, nice evening. Happy RC3. Uh, hack the planet. Yo. Hack the planet. Hack the planet. Hack the planet. Yeah, that's the message. Thanks a lot to uh, Mitch and McFly and guest and the guest parrot. So uh, uh, is that join the that community? That uh, if you know some people who know their way around 3D, tell them that's to that, no. build your own villages so uh, they they will be realized in the next version of uh, uh, the off uh, off off grid game and of course uh, for for the next uh, virtual meeting. Um, and we do, uh, well, we did change the program a little bit. So uh, McFly will be doing his talk, uh, uh, Mail to Jail, a uh, project that you might know from, from Milliways. Uh, the talk will be tomorrow at half past five on the Seabase channel. <laughs>